and Jim Hogue, and this is the House at Pooh Corner. And today we are going to be talking about alternative currencies. And your guest is Devin Landis, who has invented yet another alternative currency. And that's an area that is, that is of great interest to me, uh, because I would like to see the Federal Reserve disappear and uh, local currencies become more common. So uh, I will give about a one or two minute introduction to what local currencies are and what money is, and then we'll turn the program over to Devin. And uh, first of all, let me just explain that money is an agreement. So any local currency that comes up that people agree to use is on. It, it will work. And so what does that mean? It's an agreement to use it. And if it's accepted, it's usable. It can be accepted by all of the above, which is state by the state itself, mm -hmm. by local businesses, by businesses throughout the state primarily, and if it becomes extremely successful, businesses that extend outside the state. And uh, when the state, when I mean the state can accept it, I mean for fees and for taxes. The the key, I think, for me personally, if a, if a currency is going to be accepted widely, is that that currency has to be exchangeable for the dominant currency. So in this case, it would, of course, be the dollar. And uh, there's another word for that, which is uh, another kind of alternative currency, which is mutual credit. And there's a wonderful one in Burlington now, run by Amy Kirshner, which is accepted by businesses all throughout the Burlington area and wider than that. And um, a local currency can be based on the concept of the dollar per se, but I like the idea of a local currency being based on what Devin has come up with, which is the minimal, minimum wage for that area. Uh, and it can also be accepted for exchange of labor. That's very local currency in that case, then it doesn't matter how widely uh, picked up it is as long as people agree to exchange the labor. Um, now, what happens when a local currency becomes really successful? Or what happens if a country has a currency that is outside the central banking system? Uh, I've done several programs on how money is created, which in this country and in Europe it's created by the banks based on loans. So everything out in circulation right now was put there, was created because somebody wanted to borrow money. Mm -hmm. uh, money doesn't have to be that way, and it's not supposed to be that way. It wasn't initially conceived that way, mm -hmm. but uh, that's the system since uh, 1688, 1694, excuse me, uh, that was created when the British created the Bank of England. And um, we are going to talk about the opposite of that. Throughout history, when an area has created a different system outside that banking system, it's usually created a war, motivated a war by the powers that be, or an assassination to change the minds of the people so that they will see the light and go to the current paradigm, which mm. is debt-based money. Uh, we did a program here recently with John Root where it was the exact opposite. Money was created by the exchange itself. Money was given as a ba minimum basic income, mm. and that money was put into the exchange system so that it became productive money and it became money that you could spend on what you needed. So today we're going to be talking about a, an alternative currency that is based on the, the productivity of the people who are creating the currency. And I find that a uh, very good idea. Uh, we can go back to Colonial Script and talk about the great success of that. The Guernsey Pound, which was very successful, started in 1812 in order to rebuild the sea walls and other uh, infrastructure that was falling apart because they had the all the goods they needed, they had all the product, they had the, the stones, and they had the labor and they had the know-how. All they lacked was this concept of money, and so they created the money to make all that work. 
And then there's the Weir in Switzerland, which is not state accepted, but it is business accepted, quite successful. Uh, there's another concept, which is warrants, which uh, California instituted, and my friend John Ford with um, Gwen Hallsmith tried to get Vermont to understand the value of a warrant, which is when the state runs out of money, the state gets to write a warrant, and that is usable within exchanges of the state. And if people don't like it, what they can do is they can sell the warrant at a discount and get dollars for that, and then it gets subsumed into the currency as long as the state has no money. And that worked very, very, very well in California. Uh, Argentina had the Patacone, which is one of many complementary currencies that became the state currency. And uh, it was bought out, by the way, by the IMF because they were a little, they, they were intimidated by the threat of the good example. So let's uh, go to our guest, yep. Devin Landis, who is going to be talking about his currency. And does it have a name? It does. Uh, the Central Credit Exchange distributes talents, uh, which are blank, like uh, I have here some talents. And what they are is they represent about an hour of work at the most basic level. So we would call that minimum wage, the minimum earning. So it is always tied to a concept which people know, which is time. And everybody has the same number of hours in a day. So you can all easily convert time to money. All right, these are talents. And uh, these are talent bills. You can see that these bear my name on them. October 11th, they were created. And uh, my economic standing, what makes this system unique, is that what has formerly been personal, which is your own personal finances or bank account, is made somewhat public by receiving a grade that ranges from negative to positive four and is printed on your talent certificate when you create it. And now I have a 2.4 which is probably in the upper like 30th percentile. And um, if I were trying to spend these within a community, um, this is a pretty good bill and you would readily accept it because it shows that I've been serving the community. Um, what else can be said? Well, how, it's an, it's an IOU like any dollar, by the way, all dollars are, IOUs, they're printed by the Federal Reserve, but es essentially yeah. they're IOUs. And um, so yours is a traditional IOU. It is. Because it's got your name on it, and so you're the, it are is. you the bottom line, or, or is the next creator of the next dollar yeah. the bottom line, or what? How's that work? It redounds to classic accounting, which you would find in any of your banks that everybody uses or most people use um, so if you receive a talent with my name on it you can't necessarily redeem it especially to me as you could to anybody else but what you can do is turn it into the central um, credit exchange mm -hmm. and your account in this case would go up mm -hmm. five talents and they would see that this was came from me and they would deduct five from me and uh, yeah, this is the basis of all the accounting. Mm -hmm. And th so that is like what Amy Kirshner does in Burlington. You do a service for somebody and you get credit. Yeah. You accept a service. Yeah. You, be, you are become indebted to that credit system, but no money has changed hands. Yeah. Whereas this is a physical IOU. Yeah. Now, do you have other ways to make this work other than the physical piece of paper? Yes, that would be an app, which I am currently trying to raise funds for. I need about $11,000 to create an app, and folks with smartphones could make these transactions happen instantly, and it would help me as the only administrator of the central credit exchange to not have to do as much paperwork and to not have to use like Microsoft Excel as much. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, the next stage, the next hope for the system. 
as far as expansion goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, are you using a blockchain kind of system, or is it just like you said, uh, you're simply adding and subtracting? Yeah, uh, I'm simply doing it with Microsoft Excel, and if, when people register, they submit a real form, but with an app, a lot of that could be done electronically. And as far as app security, I would hope that nobody tries to hack the app, but if somebody does, we'll definitely get them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, right. yeah. So, yours will start with agreements among the people who use it. Yeah, for and sure. That's that's important for people to understand because there are really two different ways to get a complementary currency going, and in almost every case that I can think of, except the colonial script, well, even that to an extent, it's created by normal people, mm -hmm. and the state may or may not come in later. Yeah, with the, the Patacone in Argentina, mm -hmm. it was something that, in a manner of speaking, throughout Argentina, people did anyway, mm -hmm. because they didn't have enough cash. Mm -hmm. And throughout history, a lot of people don't have enough cash, yeah. so they come up with something else, and it's a local currency, and it may or may not be accepted yeah. by the state. Yeah. If it's successful enough, you would think that the state would say, hey, I don't want to miss out on this. Mm -hmm. and it's just like they forbid barter unless you pay taxes on it, mm -hmm. which is ridiculous, because who pays taxes on barter? You have to be, you know, um, people barter all the time without paying taxes on it. But the state likes to get its cut. Yeah. So with an alternative currency, if the state sees a benefit to it, then the state should kind of help it out yeah. And move it along. Yeah. Uh, I would suggest that Vermont would be the last state in the union to do this uh, just because there is a fear among legislators, legislators of doing anything that does not have the approval of the feds mm -hmm. and of all the people. Mm -hmm. And I think that a currency like yours mm -hmm if it got going and the state saw how usable it was, yeah. the state would approve of it, just like yeah. they do of the mutual credit system. But guess what, they tax that. Uh -huh. So they're really happy with yeah. Amy Kirshner's mutual credit system uh -huh. because it's all accounted yeah. for and therefore it's all taxable. Is she able to pay her taxes in the currency that she's made? No. Huh. No. So that's you know, the, the state doesn't care about anything except getting its tax money. Yeah. They like to see businesses thrive. I'm not saying they're, they're trying to, they're yeah. deliberately trying to stop a business from thriving. Yeah. But all they really care about mm -hmm. is that they get their money and that you're not thriving without paying your debt yeah. to the state. Uh, so keep that in mind. Two conditions for somebody registering for the Central Credit Exchange Talent Network. One is to uphold honesty, and two is to never exchange talents for any established other currency. Okay, so you're doing the opposite of what I suggested at the beginning, yeah. is that it's not. Yeah. Okay, so have you thought of the ramifications of that for the success of your talent? Yeah, growth will be slower, but in the end, more stable. Okay. And can you talk a little bit more about why it would be slower and why it would be more stable? Well, I remember when Bitcoin hit the stock market, and I remember about three days of accentuated explosion. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, that is because Bitcoin, like like if stock market was a large gear and Bitcoin was a small gear, it was basically engaging mm -hmm. with 
the international monetary system and picking up speed and you know now it's reached its equilibrium mm -hmm. uh, there's another quote like the idea of new wine if you put it in an old wine skin there's like extra fermentation that would burst the old wine container so I just think that this is a new fresh wine and it needs to be separate in a new wine skin I guess mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah now when the people in Argentina used the patacone yeah etc I'm using the, the word patacone more as a, as a synecdoche meaning there were a lot of them mm. uh, they merged they, they were so successful that they kind of merged into one and the, the name I'm using is patacone for that and it became accepted by the state because the state was bankrupt. Mm. Now, why it was bankrupt, I've read various explanations from the, quote, experts, and some of these, particularly the mainstream media experts, mm -hmm. blamed, I think, false uh, villains mm. for this. They blamed the excess of imports over exports, they blamed the um, spending money when they didn't have it, all that paradigm stuff. I think what happened was the flight of capital hmm. from Argentina, from the aristocracy, hmm. turning their, the remaining money that they might have had into dollars, hmm. and so they stripped the country of currency, period. Hmm. And when you strip your country of currency, people can't buy and sell anything, and there's yeah. no point in producing anything, so everything grinds to halt. Yeah. That's what happened with colonial script. Yeah. The Currency Act forbid yeah. the creation of colonial script, yeah. and so everything ground to a halt. Now, I forget why I mentioned that, except to talk about your interesting idea of making it a slow developer yeah. uh, so that those kinds of things that I just said can't happen. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. No. I'm, yeah. Ima I'm, I'm imagining that if gradually it mm -hmm. became more and more and more accepted mm -hmm. and the state said, oh, well, we'll take it for parking fees. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah, that would be great. That would be really good. Okay. So how do you imagine it developing well, for example, give give me some examples of businesses yeah. that might do it, and I'll I'll say first that if that business that you're talking that you're about to mention yeah. is petroleum <laughs> based, then yeah. forget it. There's no okay. way. Oil, gasoline, yeah, um, it's not going to happen. Yeah, I would say farming communities, farmers and uh, tradespeople. Um, are the foundations of society. They're the folks that keep our country going. So it would start with them. And then where would it go? Uh, then it can grow beyond that to some larger businesses and more established small businesses. And once like large things like if a, a large mine of any raw material were to accept that, I think that would be a switching point because that's like, a, mm -hmm. and it is, maybe your analogy is correct, if petroleum were to take it, that would be the, um, the true tipping point. Well, then it could be a, uni then it would be a universal currency. Yeah. Um, and you'd be famous. Sure. Like Bill Gates. Yeah. Or somebody like that. Yeah. Uh, now, if that mine were to be found in Vermont, mm -hmm. Then, then the state would be extremely foolish not to move in and say, "Well, we have yeah. a something. We have something here yeah. that is accepted worldwide yeah. as a currency and, and as a stable value. Yeah. And we are going to create a currency based on that. But you're not. You know, you're starting with goods and services mm -hmm. first, mm -hmm. and then if the, there's some other thing going on. Yeah then the state could pick up on that. Yeah. What we t discussed when 
the Brain Trust was working on this with Second Vermont Republic, mm -hmm. we, we discussed forests. Mm -hmm. uh, the great thing about um, timber and stumpage is that you don't have to do anything to make it grow. Mm -hmm. So it accrues interest, if you will, yeah. without any debt. Yeah. It just keeps growing. Yeah. And when you harvest it, it's got a certain value. Mm -hmm. The trouble with it is, of course, based on the dollar, it goes up and it goes down, depending mm -hmm. on the needs mm -hmm. of the community for lumber. Mm -hmm. uh, but in any event, that's one of the things we talked about. It's a commodity. Yeah. And then there have been, there have been others that people have thought of. I thought of actually water. Mm -hmm. because Vermont has a, a rich, clean supply of water, mm -hmm. which can be used for hydro, mm -hmm. which they foolishly kind of abandoned in the early 1900s and continued to abandon it. Um, there's actually enough hydro to supply all the electricity in Vermont if they decided, if they wanted to do that, but they don't. So you've got forests and you've got water that are actually worth more Mm. than gold. Mm. You try to buy mm. a little water in the store, and how much do you pay for it? You, mm -hmm. you pay more than you pay for gasoline. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me that that would be a good thing to fall back on mm. as the basis for your currency. Mm -hmm. But again, you've chosen to go with goods and services, but do you see any um, shifting, if, if that's the right word, or morphing into a currency based on timber or water? Uh, I don't think so. I would like to eventually print, well, um, how do you call it, make coins, mm -hmm. where you melt down metal, and um, one talent is worth about 10 bucks. So that is not practical when it comes to buying coffee because you still have about eight dollars left over um, enter coins and then to make coins real and accurate they should the value of their metal should as precisely as possible match the amount of time and effort it took to mine and coin that coin mm -hmm. um, I can cite a definite problem in our uh, U.S. economy, where if you go to the hardware store, a washer is between five and ten cents. A penny is a washer without a hole in it. So if you were to drill a hole in a penny, you would have a washer for one cent. And the Secretary of the Treasury or the U.S. Mint readily admits that it's impractical to print pennies and they lose money mm -hmm. when printing pennies. So, at least in the U.S. system, inflation has occurred for so long that a penny is no longer even um, accurate. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a time when the copper and the penny was worth more than the penny. So, uh -huh. so People they switched, were melting it down? Yeah, so they switched that. They, they don't use yeah. copper pennies anymore. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> so now you've got the same situation, yeah. only without the copper, yeah. where the penny is worth more, more for making a water yeah. out of it. I haven't, I'm only 30 years old, but one thing I would love to see and would really interest me is an economy and a society, maybe it already exists, but it's certainly not in the United States, where money is not always inflating. And so instead, of people like chasing an ever decreasing value in their currency, like anybody who is saving money, it's every year one to two percent less worth less than it was the year before. Um, what would it be like if a currency were in some cases becoming more valuable than the goods and services around it? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we've ever seen that since the early 1900s. Well, gold. Oh, yeah. So it's if you generally are an owner of gold, then you do feel like that every day. Yeah. Well, <laughs> sometimes it drops and, you know, there could be a yeah. 
there there could be a run on gold and, and uh -huh. you know the price go up and then okay. the price go down. So precious metals. But uh, generally speaking, gold has increased tremendously in value. Yeah. Uh, and then back to Bitcoin. Yeah. And look what happened with Bitcoin. The the thing about that, Bitcoin isn't that much of an alternative, folks, mm. because it's based on the dollar. Yeah. Clearly, and yeah. so that you're not buying Bitcoin. Uh, hoping that it's going to lose value. Yeah. You're, you're buying Bitcoin hoping that it'll be worth more dollars than it was when you bought it. And so it's a speculative event, but it is, at least it's not inflationary because mm -hmm. it's a, th there's a finite amount mm -hmm. of Bitcoin out there. And so that what gets, tr unless you mine it, which is ex another matter, um, there's a finite amount of Bitcoin out there so it can't become in inflationary yeah. just because of that, but it can change its value based on the dollar. Mm -hmm. So you've got to, if you're going to buy Bitcoin, folks, buy it when it's low. It's that simple. Yeah. <laughs> and hope that it goes up. But what you said is probably true, that it has probably hit a, an equilibrium mm. at this point. I don't know, what is it, $6,000? I think so, yeah. I, I really don't know what Bitcoin yeah, is. That sounds about right. Today. And um, it's, it, whatever it hit, I think it stayed there for a long time, so that's why you're yeah. suggesting it's hit an equilibrium. Yeah. Now, if, on the other hand, the dollar becomes extremely inflated quickly, mm -hmm. Argentina just went, <clears throat> switched, no, didn't switch, picked up Bitcoin as an exchange, as an official government exchange wow. uh, method. Okay. Um, again, it's not going to do them any good unless they have production. Yeah. If you just simply creating another way of exchanging, it doesn't help you if you don't have anything to exchange it for, mm -hmm. except things from out of the country, which is a really bad idea. Yeah. So I guess we don't have time to go into that. No. But you can basically understand that a, a, a nation that doesn't produce enough to make up for the currency at hand uh, is in trouble yeah. because that currency flows out of the country and there you are again yeah. in debt. There you are again with, without enough money to buy what you need to buy. Yeah. So a local currency can be a big help yeah. in, hey, in that. I'll plug my website before we sign off. It's uh, centralcreditexchange.org. Okay, and thank you very much for listening. House at Pooh Corner with Devin Landis thank you. and Jim Hogue. Thank you. Bye-bye.